So how can we fix this? How much can medical science help and what role can society play? Earlier this week, I had a conversation with India's top bariatric surgeon, Dr. Mufazil Lakrawala. Here is a snippet of that conversation. Hello and welcome to this very special conversation on First Post, where we'll try and talk about issues that touch you directly. Uh, before I introduce our guest here, I want to share two data sets with you. Number one, at least 65 million individuals worldwide are said to be suffering from long COVID. The actual numbers may be higher because of undocumented cases. And number two, uh, by 2035, more than half of the world's population will be obese. This is according to the World Obesity Foundation. Uh, so how do we identify and address these challenges and how are these challenges impacting our lives without us acknowledging them? Uh, that's what we'll discuss that and more. Uh, with me is uh, Dr. Mufazal Lakrawala, India's uh, foremost uh, laparoscopic surgeon, uh, someone who specializes in bariatric surgery. And he has helped thousands of patients from across the world uh, overcome debilitating conditions to get a new shot at life. Dr. Lakrawala, or should I say Dr. Mufi, welcome to First Post. Thank you, Varti, and uh, thank you for inviting me. Or actually, like uh, your start very clearly said, we are facing two pandemics. One is of a communicable kind, which was the COVID-19 pandemic, which kind of made up and sit up and take notice of our health. And the other one was a non-communicable disease burden, which the whole world recognizes today. Things like diabetes, hypertension, um, various other uh, dyslipidemia or cholesterol, whatever you want to call it in lay people's term, is the non-communicable disease burden, which is actually affecting our lives. And the fact that both these kind of merge at some point uh, financially, I, I read a, a recent report that said that $43.2 billion worth of uh, expenditure might go into treating obesity and obesity-related illnesses by 2035. So it's almost close to the 2020 numbers of COVID and the amount of money the world spread. Yes, we are, we are sitting on two time bombs. One we've probably overcome with the vaccination and everything. The other one, which is going to uh, grow at such a speed, so we need to do something about it. I think it's an uh, it's, uh, elephant in the room that a lot of us have ignored for too long. And why would I call it a disease? You know, I said disease. Most people don't recognize it. I, I was going to ask you that, that, that. That's not how we see it. We see it as a, sort of some sort of a lifestyle issue. The way we eat, sleep, conduct ourselves. Maybe that's what... But so do we have a very skewed notion then of obesity? Yeah, because how do you define disease, right? WHO's definition of disease is anything that produces a problem. Anything that affects your functionality in the long term and decreases your lifespan. Obesity, take off. And most importantly, we also do know that any disease, any process which causes other disease to grow along with it is again obesity. It does come with this harbinger of bringing comorbidities. We call it diabetes. We call it sleep apnea. We call it infertility. There are so many cancers which are linked to obesity. So why don't we recognize it as a disease? Uh, the world started recognizing, some of the developed countries have started recognizing it. I think for socio-political reasons, some of the underdeveloping countries or the developing countries are still not recognizing obesity as a disease. You deal with people who are seeking weight loss all the time and uh, not all cases need medical intervention. But when you talk to them, uh, what is your impression? How many of these people come to you uh, because they need medical support? And how many are those who are, who are just looking at the last resort of sorts because they can't deal with the shame or the stigma attached to it? Stigma is one big problem that society deals with and subjects people with obesity and, you know, as world associations, as individuals who treat obesity, our biggest uh, problem is not treating the medical conditions of obesity, treating the mental health and the stigma associated with obesity. You could be anybody, right? You could be the most powerful man in the world. You could be the most richest man in the world. You could be the poorest of the poor. Stigma will not leave you if you are done with obesity. It's like our, how, we, how we are brought up, right? If someone with a weight problem were to be picking up a plate at a wedding reception, and probably that person's going to eat the least amount because he's cognitive of the fact that there are all the eyes on him. And actually that guy feels like a culprit. What am I doing here? He feels so socially uncomfortable being there. And that is what as society, as families, we need to understand that. Please treat the health problems, but don't stigmatize a person just for being heavier than normal. No, I, I never sort of articulated it in my head or otherwise in this way, the way you've put it, that, you know, what may be going into the mind of somebody who's who knows that they're being watched and uh, they're being 
sort of punished for no fault of theirs. And, and even those who lose weight, I think uh, it's not a linear process. People lose and then uh, in, in a lot of cases gain it again. Um, how often in your experience does that happen? And uh, how does it play on the mind of that person? Then? The obese kid, not to be blamed at all. It's not their fault that they are, they are heavy. And that's where as society, we must understand that they are the ones who try the hardest. They keep blaming themselves for not fitting into the correct mold that we call it, that fits into societal norms of being healthy. No, obese people are the most malnourished or the most unhealthy people. So you're saying that, that people who have a weight problem or who are big and trying to lose weight are actually malnourished? They are. They are. Actually, the most obese people are the most malnourished of all individuals. So is there no solution then? And then what do you tell these, these patients of yours who have been swinging between very high weight and then coming down and then gaining it again? And are there any specific cases that, that sort of spring to mind? It's not a T20 match. It's a full-blown test match. You'll have to maintain that consistency for the rest of your life, right? We always do it for a reason, a season, but never for a lifetime. And that's the big problem with diet. For example, I'll tell you, it becomes even more difficult the more famous you are because society trolls you, stigmatizes you because you're always in the limelight. For example, an actor or a politician or even... For example, someone who's rich and famous is always in the media spotlight. We can always, as surgeons, hide ourselves behind the mask. Nobody knows. But it's more difficult for these people because every time they come out, they are under the media glare. They are, they are trolled for no fault of theirs. For example, I'll tell you, uh, I operated on uh, Mr. Gutkari and Mr. Venkana because both have come out and said that they've had surgery. And both of them got surgery done because with diabetes and with sleep apnea, it was really affecting their political careers. And we've seen one went on to become the vice president, one has done so well as the transport minister. And they've done really well. They're much older, they did. And another person I can speak about because he uh, is someone who's, I think, fought across this battle through time and again, right? Uh, kid to one of the richest people in Asia, uh, Anant. He's tried very hard, right? From his young days, I know this. Anantambani, yeah. Anantambani was one guy who everyone has vilified. Every time he's lost weight, poor guy, everyone say, oh, he's had taken the simple solution. He's gone and got the surgery done. Yeah, yeah, I know. Some, some people have even claimed that I know who's operated on him. I've been told so many times, have you operated on him? <laughs> it's very interesting, you know, because you rightly say that this, this is talked about a lot in the media. And uh, most people just have an outsider's view of what's going on and are quick to uh, pass judge. comments and yeah. judge. Uh, that's how people are. Uh, but, but, and, and I guess it can be more difficult for people in the spotlight because if you lose it, then you must have taken the easy way out. And if you don't lose it, then you're just not showing the kind of commitment that, that is required to first fix yourself before doing something else. So I guess the pressure can be, can be that much more. And the poor guys had quite a struggle, right? Struggle to be in the spotlight. Every time he sat on an IPL bench, people have sniggered and laughed at him. And that's really not fair. I mean, uh, how do we know what he's tried or not tried? None of us know. Now I know him as a person and I know what all he goes through on a day-to-day -day basis and what all he tries. For example, he lost a lot of weight and that became news, right? Public news. And everyone said, wow, superb. He almost lost close to from I think 217 or 20 when he was there. He came down to 79 kilos before Isha and uh, Akash's wedding. And the whole world was talking about it because he was a famous guy and he just did it with diet and exercise. Um, somehow back in, he went up that, uh, that's a steep curve. And then he again tried the same thing. It didn't work again. So it was not that he was very lazy suddenly or he had started eating a lot of sugar or he had stopped doing all the things that he had done correctly the first time around. And then he's had a lung issue, right? Uh, since the age of two, he's tried hell of a lot to try and get rid of it because of who he is. He's seen world experts and everybody. And I do remember because I was part of one of those meetings and some of the best experts in the space of obesity across the world have told him, you are a miracle. You've done brilliantly. And me, if 
these papers were put up in front of us, we would have never believed that you've actually lost this kind of weight with just diet and exercise. Mm -hmm. But he had made up his mind at that point of time to lose. Unfortunately, it's not only a mind issue. Now, when he's trying really hard, it's still a body issue. He will not necessarily lose the same kind of weight. Again, uh, in the middle, he was contemplating whether to get surgery done or not. There are, um, to the media, I cannot speak about all the various diseases that come along with this uh, thing. But I do know that he's one guy who's so positive. Every time I've spoken to him about it, uh, and I do know that poor guy's been trolled for, for something or the other. And most people will be thinking, oh, he's a rich man's kid, so he must be eating a lot, or he must be just partying all the time and all. No, the guy, I do know that I had put him on a program and the guy was in the pool for two hours every single day, right? He would be on green juice, for example. He would have less than 500 calories because we thought that his body would lose that weight. So, so you know, 2022 was when the first, the latest set of obesity drugs were introduced in the market. 2023, we saw the market boom, like on, on first post in my show, we've done a lot of stories on how big these companies have become, some of them bigger than luxury brands yeah. now. Uh, 2024 is being tipped as the, the weight loss here are the weight loss drugs. Do you think that is the new normal? And we've not seen any um, harmful side effects, or at least I don't know of them. So do you, would you say that medical science has finally cracked it? No. Obesity is too complex a problem. It's too lifelong a problem. It's too chronic a disease, like I had called it earlier. So please don't fool yourself by saying this is the be-all and end-all. Yes, it's the key by which we've managed to open the door. And it's not accessible as, as of today. I mean, if you look at some, your, your Ozempics and all, I think $1,000 per month is the average. Not for the common man. Yes. So with more pharma players now entering this and with the way this is, I mean, uh, there's, a, there's a thriving black market. Do you think that this is going to be then the new normal uh, and, and, and we will have more accessible options going forward? In India, I believe uh, the weight loss market is close to 2 lakh crore rupees. It's, it's, it's booming. Indeed. World over, you can imagine the kind of money that is being put into these kind of drugs. Yes, there are lots of drugs in pipeline today. Uh, there are single drugs like the Ozempics and the Munjaros of the world. And then there are the other combination drugs which give you a good weight loss. What we need, do need to understand is that 20% or around there is good enough uh, total body weight loss for getting rid of medical problems. Rest is all cosmetic. So quite often, everything is put under the same bouquet, yeah. right? From liposuctions to plastic surgery to bariatric surgery to uh, Ayurveda to Yunani to uh, motivational speakers who kind of make you lose that. No, it is, you can't put everything under one bracket. You need to dissect. There's not one size that fits all. Everyone will need a different solution. For example, because I had mentioned an He's done brilliantly again. He's lost hell of a lot of weight and he's not had surgery. So I can say this on camera. He's not had surgery. He's working very, very hard. Probably has a goal to look forward to. Maybe his upcoming wedding and he's, he's looking really charged. He's right up there mentally to try and fight this. Uh, it's always going to be an uphill task, right? So he's always going to fight against the odds because his body, God has ordained with him. So God doesn't give us everything. 